This is Queen Anne's summer house, an early 18th century folly that stands in the woodland on the Warren, at the highest point on the Shuttleworth estate. It was probably built by Sir Samuel Ongley, a rich linen draper, who bought the estate in the 1690s and was knighted by Queen Anne in 1712. Sir Samuel built the summer house to beautify his estate. He positioned it at the hub of views radiating through the trees that he also planted, so that you could look back at his mansion below. The summer house would have been used for pleasure, as a destination for picnics and walks, as was then the fashion. Sir Samuel has a fine marble memorial in St Leonard's Church at Old Warden. His heirs lived at Old Warden until 1872, when the estate was bought by a wealthy industrialist, Joseph Shuttleworth. He knocked down the old mansion and built the one we see today, which was designed by Henry Clutton. By now, the summer house was being lived in by the head gamekeeper, but was not in good repair. In 1875, Joseph Shuttleworth built his gamekeeper a new cottage on the Warren and restored the summer house. He got local Bedford architect John Usher to design a balustrade for it and added his date stone with the Shuttleworth crest. The summer house then entered a golden period of shooting parties and country house weekends. This came to an end in 1940 when Richard Shuttleworth, heir to the estate, was tragically killed in a flying accident. Life on the estate changed during the war and Richard's mother Dorothy transferred the estate to an educational charity, the Shuttleworth Trust. Without water or electricity, the summer house gradually fell into disrepair. Weather damage, vandalism and the ravages of time reduced the building to a derelict, roofless shell. Although it still looked quite solid and four-square, in reality the brickwork is just a skin and began to crumble away. Plants grew wild in the elegant central chamber, windows disappeared and the plaster fell from the walls. The Shuttleworth Trust had no use for the building and, as an educational charity, the repair costs were beyond its means. In 2001, the Shuttleworth Trust approached the Landmark Trust. Landmark is a national building preservation charity that rescues and restores buildings at risk. It took Landmark several years to raise the necessary funds, during which a temporary roof was erected to help the building dry out. Finally, in 2008, an exciting restoration project began. Alastair Dick Clayland, Landmark's project manager, explains how Landmark approached the project. Well, we try and keep as much of the original fabric as possible. That's a very key part of what we do, um, because it gives the building the character and interests. You do have to make certain decisions um, as to how, how you're going to restore it because almost all buildings have been altered over time. This building we are fairly sure was built in the early 18th century so broadly speaking that's the key part of the fabric that we're retaining um, but things like the balustrade, the terracotta balustrade which were added at a later date, we don't actually know what the original was and there's probably very little evidence if any as to what it was um, and the existing um, surviving terracotta balustrade is in good condition. So that's an example of something where we, we won't remove that because it's, it's, it's perfectly good as it is. So it's not, it's not a purist exercise. We're not deliberately going back um, absolutely to one period in time. Queen Anne's summer house is a key building on the Shuttleworth estate. Its location, history and design are an indication of the significance of the wider estate as project architect Philip Orchard explains. Well, there are two things. Firstly, the general design of it, which is very much of an early 18th century folly castle, um, of the style of uh, the English Baroque, um, Sir John Vanbrugh and Nicholas Hawksmoor, and uh, architects of that time. But also the materials it's made of, with some very high quality red brick facing on the outside, um, incredibly good uh, quality materials and workmanship and we're getting similar quality workmanship from our um, subcontractors of brick workers who are working on the project, Emma Simpson and her team. 
We approach this type of work with a lot of care and um, a lot of thinking goes into it beforehand. The brickwork on this building is all gauged brickwork, which is the sort of considered to be the, the highest form of, of brickwork and it's, um, it's laid to a very fine accuracy and the bricks are special bricks, they're, they're red rubbers which are cut to particular shapes and it's all gauged to a very, very fine tolerance so that you can have very thin joints. English Heritage provided funding for two apprentices to work on the summer house as part of their ongoing commitment to preserving traditional building skills. The restoration process requires the services of a variety of conservation professionals, each individual contributing specific skills and knowledge to the overall restoration process. Once the brick restoration had been completed and the roof renewed, the scaffolding was taken down. Specialist carpenters and stonemasons began to work on the windows, floor, interior walls and plinth. Some of the restoration work could not be completed on site. The carved brackets over the door were reproduced by students from the City and Guilds of London Art School, using old photos for evidence. The railings were cut away from the stone plinths and repaired by Cold Hanworth Forge. These railings are some of the earliest puddled iron railings made by the Henry Court process. And what we've had to do is to extend the lengths of each one by foot. And uh, so that meant fire welding, that's the traditional way by which a blacksmith welds in fire, one foot of wrought iron onto the end of the bar. The project team continued to inspect and monitor the building work as it was completed. Electricity and water were brought in and the main chamber has underfloor heating. The heat is provided by a ground source heat pump system which captures latent heat deep underground to warm the water used to heat the building. The process involved drilling through sand and clay to create three boreholes each 90 metres deep. With all electrical work, plumbing and heating installed, all that remained to be done were the finishes, painting, decorating and the construction of the interior. Queen Anne's summer house now has all modern conveniences. The paint colours are based on the 18th century originals, discovered through paint analysis. A kitchen is cunningly hidden in one of the turrets and a brick vaulted basement has become a bathroom. Today, Queen Anne's Summer House is let by the Landmark Trust for holidays for up to two people. Anyone can stay in this secluded and elegant retreat, and in this way its future is assured so that it will never again fall into disrepair.